Hey, what's up? Heidi Mitro here with When You Lead Coaching and Consulting, and it is time for When You Lead Live. So why should you be tuning in to When You Lead Live? What are we actually doing here on this weekly show? Oh, friends, I know if you're tuning in, you're more than likely a high achiever, right? You're a box checker, you're a list maker, you've got multiple planners, you've got organization up the wazoo, and chances are you need a little reframe. You need a little weekly encouragement, a little weekly touch point in order to shift so that you are actually more congruent with who you actually are, right? So this show is really designed to take buzzwords, to take common topics and turn them on their ear a little bit, to reframe them so that you have access to a deeper version of yourself. So oftentimes in business, oftentimes in life, we talk about taking things to the next level. Inside of When You Lead Coaching and Consulting, we talk about the new next level. So instead of this next level being like up and away and bigger and epic and all the things out here, what we recognize as a community is that the, the true next level is a deeper connection to yourself. And when you have a deeper connection to yourself, paradoxically, you have a vaster reach. So on today's show, we're going to be talking about people pleasing. Ugh, it, it happens all the time. We talk about it inside of the inner circle. We talk about it when I am doing presentations uh, to companies about the Colby A index. People pleasing is a rampant thing that's happening in our culture, specifically with high achieving women. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about what it is. You already know what it is, but we're going to talk about what it really is, why we do it and what to do instead. So we're going to reframe it. And then I'm going to give you some language. So two weeks ago, gosh, I don't know, all the days are running together. We had a big, bold boundaries challenge inside of our community. And we had this unbelievable week of teaching and collaborating and breakthroughs. And there were so many breakthroughs <laughs> that happened. And what it really stoked is my curiosity about why. Why do we have a hard time with boundaries? And just to spoil the ending for you, you already have boundaries. Like this is, you don't have to go get them. Typically what's happening when you're people pleasing is you're crossing your own boundaries. And if you don't know where your boundaries are, people pleasing is going to cue you in. So we're gonna talk about that. Before we talk about that, I am gonna light our candle. Partly because it reminds me to slow down. <laughs> I get on a, on a roll and I, I need the sacred interruption of a candlelight. So we're going to light this, ground ourselves in just a little bit more. <sighs> Good morning. Say hi if you're catching this live. Also, let me know if you catch this on a replay. I know a lot of you catch this on Tuesday evenings um, or even, you know, anytime during the rest of the week. I would, I would love to know who's joining us and where you're joining from. That's always fascinating to me as well. So people pleasing. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I, we talked about the drama triangle very recently in a couple of my presentations and inside the inner circle. And the drama triangle is this magical, terrible place where we end up um, creating a lot of drama in our lives. And we talked about this in the Big Bold Boundaries Challenge. By the way, if you want access to that training, hit me up. Just put like uh, private message me or send me an email, Heidi at HeidiMetro.com, Big Bold Boundaries, and I'll, we'll, we can talk about how to get you that training. When we're talking about the drama triangle, here's what you need to know. There's no solution there. There's absolutely no solution when you're in the drama triangle. And people pleasing puts you squarely in a rescuer role. So the three roles of the drama triangle are the rescuer, the victim, and the bully. And people pleasers, high achievers, especially high achieving women, tend to fall into this rescuer category. Partly it's not our fault. Partly this is culturally conditioned that women are supposed to take care of everything. Uh, that not, in addition to doing, you know, a full-time gig, we're also supposed to do the back-end stuff. We're supposed to do the home stuff, the keepers of traditions, all of the appointments, all of the running around, all of the research. God, think about how much energy you take or spend doing research on stuff, right? Because it's never just like the kid needs a pair of boots. It's what size are they now? And you're like trying to find it on the bottom of their freaking boots. <laughs> what brand is, you know, acceptable? Are they going to lose them? You're weighing the pros and cons. And then there's 17,000 brands in a million different colors, right? We are responsible for these things. 
and we don't have to be, things can shift. People pleasing tends to be a stress response. And when you are in the rescuer role of the drama triangle, you are in a, the, the, your sympathetic nervous system. You are in a stress response. And typically what happens as people pleasers is you are trying to temporarily relieve yourself of a nervous system trigger, of a nervous system activation. So if you are in a position where someone is asking you to do something, Hey, this is happening right now, current day in our household because it's snowing. <laughs> hey, mama, do you know where X, Y, and Z is? Hey, mama, do you do I have new boots? Hey, mama, do I have, you know, on and on and on. I want my children to be warm. I want them to be cared for. I do not want to keep track of all of their crap. So what I have learned to be true about myself is that in that people pleasing role in an attempt to keep the children okay and literally off my back right i will temporarily cross my boundaries and stay in that nervous system hit and please them but then what ends up happening is i have extended my stress i have extended the amount of time that i'm going to stay in stress people pleasing is a temporary fix people pleasing is something that we do when we just need to like get to the next thing and I caught myself this morning. So I get up in the morning and I come out to the studio and I do my morning pages and I write and I, I get clarity on things. And it's a really, the way I feel about that time is it's a really saturated time. It's very inky to me and it's just mine. And I was rushing through this morning routine, not just rushing, but like in this panicked pace. And I'd read somewhere and I, I don't remember where, if you know where it is, let me know. But I had read somewhere that rushing is a form of lack. And I was like, no shit. And I was deeply in a lack space this morning. It's mid month. I'm doing my boundaries or my, my finances and my boundaries, right? Both. But I, I was recognizing this space of lack and I were headed into the holiday season, especially, you know, those of us that are, are celebrating these um, December holidays. And I have found myself in this place of lack. I found myself in this place of, I want everyone to have a really great holiday. I am people pleasing my way through the holidays. And this is historically how it's been. I've been the keeper of the traditions, all of the family pictures, all of the Christmas cards. Let me know if you relate to any of this, all of the who likes what type of cookie, who wants the gifts. And now the kids have really high expectations there. We have, we, are lucky enough and fortunate enough to be able to be generous. But when I shift into people pleasing, I am coming from a place of lack. I'm coming from a place of rescuer. And there's no solution there because it's a temporary fix. People pleasing stems from lack. People pleasing stems from an imbalanced nervous system. And so oftentimes what we do as people pleasers is we say yes in the moment to get rid of that temporary discomfort but then what we do is we have long-term discomfort. Do you relate to that? <laughs> so I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to cross my own boundaries. Then I'm going to blame them, which is going to put me in the bully role. And I'm going to stay in that drama triangle and I'm going to chase my tail. I'm going to people please. And then I'm going to be resentful. And then I'm going to feel like a victim. And then I'm going to feel guilty. So I'm going to go back up to people please. And then I'm going to go to bully because I'm resentful. And then I'm going to go to victim. And it becomes this like, running of the triangle from now until January 1st. Oh, and by the way, you should probably set all of your big gigantic goals at that time. I'm going to talk about that in just a few minutes. When we are people pleasing, it's not your fault. First and foremost, I do need you to know that this is not about shaming you for being a people pleaser. This is about reframing people pleasing as a nervous system dysregulation. People pleasing means that you are in a space of lack. People pleasing means that you are not in a place where you are trusting yourself. And so you'll take the temporary hit and then you will have this long-term stress. I promise you that if you can work through that temporary discomfort, that you will have long-term relief. So I'm working through temporary discomfort right now. I'm literally doing our holiday budget. I'm looking at how are we going to be spending, you know, the two weeks that we're home together and I want to do everything, man. I want to take trips. I want to buy them all the expensive presents. I want to make sure that they have everything they need. I want to go to a hundred movies, right? And all of that 
puts me in a nervous system response. And when I make decisions, when I'm in that nervous system hit, I'm going to people please my way until January 15th. And that's two months from now, and I'm not doing that. So what do we do instead? What we do instead is we start by telling the truth. If someone asks you something, you're going to scan your nervous system and your heart rate's probably going to be going. You're probably going to be in this in the sympathetic nervous system space of fight, flight, or freeze. Fawn or funny, those are the other two that we've added. Again, this was all in our, our Big Bold Boundaries challenge. If you want access to that, let me know. And then what ends up happening, what we want to be able to do is soothe our nervous system enough to say no in the moment. If you do not have access, if you don't have enough repetition, if you don't have the skill set yet to be able to say no in the moment, I want you to buy yourself some time. Let me think about that and I'll get back to you. The goal is to be able to temporarily be uncomfortable in the moment and tell the truth. The truth is such a foreign language. We're going to talk about this in a future episode because telling the truth is not something that we're used to doing. (laughs) When I tell my kids the truth, they're not surprised anymore. Like if they ask me to do something, I'm like, I actually really don't want to do that. I used to feel like I had to justify. I used to feel like I had to come up with excuses. I used to feel like I just had to always say yes. That temporary, I'm, I'm not joking when I say that it's temporary because if someone asks you to do something that you don't want to do, It might take you 47 seconds to actually get through the entire exchange. If you were to time it, it it does not take very long to say no. What takes really a long time is to say yes and then be pissed about it for six months. What takes a long time is for you to say yes and then run ragged in that drama triangle. What takes a really long time is for you to say yes and then have to come back and say, I can't anymore. People pleasing is a nervous system hit. And we oftentimes just want that nervous system feeling. We want that loop completed. However, that loop is connected to all of these other rings of stress. If you can close that loop with a very succinct no, a very succinct boundary, I promise you a no takes less than a minute. It is the weirdest thing, but that physical discomfort and I want, I understand. And the more you understand about your physiology, the more that you understand how you're wired, the safer you will be in relationship with yourself. So in those moments where someone is asking you to go against your boundaries, oftentimes it's not malicious either. (laughs) Oftentimes it's a, it's a request and it's based on a history that they have with you. When you start to change that tune, your nervous system is going to get activated. That's okay. We don't need to shame ourselves. But I promise you that if you can hang in there for a minute of incredible discomfort, you will buy yourself weeks and months and it will be so much cheaper than the therapy that you're going to need in order to figure out how you're going to get out of that or in order to figure out how you're going to stay in that relationship and not resent them. Do you think that you can hack it? Do you trust yourself to be able to stay in an uncomfortable temporary moment for long-term gain? Our culture sucks at this, by the way. We do. Delayed gratification blows. (laughs) We're not good at it. Delayed gratification is something I'm still learning, right? Delayed, like if you can stay in something uncomfortable for long enough, you will get the reward. In the case of people pleasing, it's actually not that long. Less than a minute to say no. Less than a minute to say no. Between now and the end of the year, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of family gatherings. And especially now that we're on the other side, or I know we're not technically on the other side of COVID, but it's different. People are gathering differently. You're going to be in situations where you are you're going to bump up against your own boundaries or someone else is gonna bump up against them. I want you to challenge yourself to stay in an uncomfortable moment and tell the truth. No, I'm not doing that. No, I don't want to do that. That doesn't work for us this year. We won't be joining you this year. I'm not able to participate the way that I used to. This used to work for me. It doesn't anymore. Are you catching these phrases? Write them down. Which one do you need to hear the most? 
we're going to head into relationships with people that and we're going to be eating and drinking and having having access to so many more uh, chemicals, <laughs> right? Please don't give yourself a free pass to feel like shit from now until January, right? Like you don't have to. You don't have to people please. You don't have to eat anything you don't want. You're a grown up. You don't have to drink anything you don't want. You don't have to go anywhere you don't want. You don't actually have, you don't owe anybody anything. And when I was looking at the definition of please, I wanted, I actually wanted to, to um, talk about this. The word please, the etymology, so the origin of this word, means to seem good. And I was like, to seem good? I don't want to seem good. Seeming good is really exhausting. Seeming good keeps me at odds with myself. I don't want my appearance to be one thing and how I feel about myself to be another. Those need to be congruent. And I am less concerned with how I'm seen and absolutely enthralled with how I feel. I don't, I had a, I hope you're watching, honey. I had a, a girlfriend reach out to me um, over my birthday weekend and she said, you and Mike are beaming. And I was like, I had this reaction. Like I literally just did it for you three times in a row. And I was like, we are <laughs> like, I, I know we are. And we actually feel that way. It's not an act. It's not like we genuinely, if, if I could get paid to just hang out with Mike and travel and go eat and coach, you know, on the, on the slide, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I literally just said that to Mike. I'm like, how do I get paid to just travel with you? How do I get paid to, to be in tropical destinations and live this purposeful life that we have? Like, how do, how do we do that? Our, the way that Mike and I seem, the way that my family and I seem is that is not just an appearance. That's actually how we are. And do we have perfect days all the time? Of course not. Like, that's not the point. What the point is, is if you were to come into my home or you were to hang out with us or you were to, you know, watch us on the daily, how we appear and how we actually are are very congruent. I don't always have this good of hair. <laughs> I don't know. She got conditioned last night and she's got a little bounce to her. I don't want to seem a certain way. I behind the scenes and who I am in front are are very very congruent. If you seem like a good person to other people and you feel like shit on the back end, you are not congruent. And that's not to shame you, that's to say how you feel about yourself gets to take priority. So why, why, do, why do we not stop this? Like we know people pleasing isn't good for us. Part of it we've already talked about, it's that nervous system. It's you're in it and you just want that bad feeling to be done in the moment. And then you're gonna drag it out, right? The other reason is we don't wanna seem selfish. We value other people's opinions more than we value ourselves. We value other people's opinions of us. We value the appearance of who we are more than how we feel about ourselves. No, we're not doing that anymore. If you give yourself one gift this holiday season, knock that shit off immediately. You get to prioritize yourself. It doesn't mean that you don't consider other people. It doesn't mean that you don't consider how your decisions are going to affect people. It doesn't mean that you get to the point where you're just like, Nobody else matters. That isn't the case. And most of the women, all of the women that I work with, all of the high achievers that I work with are incredibly kind human beings who have been raised to be nice. And one thing that we do inside the inner circle is we make the distinction between the two. I'm not interested in hanging out with nice women. Kind women, absolutely. Kind women prioritize themselves. Kind women tell the truth in the moment as fast as they can. As fast as they can might take them the minute that it's going to take to say no. It might take them, they bought themselves some time and then they have to come back. It might take you years to realize that you need to say no. Kind women say no. Kind women don't overcommit to things that they don't actually want to do and then resent people on the back end. You get to consider how other people might react to your choices and you get to prioritize yourself. Both of those things can be true. I have been accused of being selfish. I'm actually really okay with that. I have spent 
the majority of my life, I'm still new to this, probably in the last decade, I'm still new to taking my own feelings into consideration. I never even considered my feelings. I only considered how I would feel about how other people would feel about me. Untangle that. <laughs> but it's true. I, sp I spent the majority of my life appearing like everything was okay. And it was an absolute burning down shit show on the back end. I'm just not interested in that. <clears throat> this ride ends, friends. I am not interested in wasting my life appearing a certain way. And those of you that know me, those of you that have been in the inner circle, those of you that are on my team, those of you that are in my family, like, you know that who I am is who I am. And I spent the majority of my life never really considering how I felt about me. Now I prioritize how I feel about me. I consider how it might affect other people. And as a decision maker, as the decision maker in my life, I go first. How does this affect me? Does it mean that I don't think about my family? Of course not. Does it mean that I don't think about how this might affect my friends? Of course not. But I'm able to tell the truth. And telling the truth, I live in the Midwest, friends. This is like Minnesota passive aggressive land. I live in a place where we don't tell the truth. We're not direct. The definition of direct, by the way, is honest. The etymology of that word is to, to be straight, to be honest. It's a revolutionary act to tell the truth in the moment directly and succinctly, especially here in the Midwest as a white woman. <laughs> when we're used to, if someone serves you something, you're like, yeah, that's different. How many of you are like, mm, yeah, that's different. I've never had that before. Yeah, I can make that work and other lies that we tell. Yeah, that's no problem. I'd be happy to do that. We have all of these ways of people pleasing and we substitute other people's opinions of ourselves for our own opinion of ourselves. I don't do that anymore. Does it take work? Yes. Does it take intention? Yes. Is it way less work and attention than people pleasing? Oh my God, yes. It's okay for other people to be disappointed. It's okay for other people to have to manage their own feelings. It's okay if they have to manage their own feelings and they don't. It's okay if they think you're a giant piece of shit. <laughs> you're going to be okay. If someone else's opinion of you matters more to you than your opinion of yourself, we have a problem. And the symptom that you can bank on is people-pleasing. Because people-pleasing puts you in a position where other people have power over how you feel about you. I want you to take your power back. It may take you the rest of your life to do it. It'll be a worthy adventure. I don't want you to be so afraid of how you seem, how you appear to other people that your relationship with yourself suffers. Because I promise you that when you tend to your relationship with you and you let others tend to their relationship with themselves, they're... There may be a, a rocky period. That's okay. There's a level set that's happening. There's a readjustment of expectations happening. Good. You can handle the temporary discomfort. You, I, pr I promise you, you can handle the temporary discomfort. 2022, and I just, I just entered my 43rd year. My birthday was on Friday. 11, 11 is my birthday, which I love. I just, I do. I love my birthday. I've loved my birthday forever and ever. I was, as I was doing some reflection over this weekend about what the about what 22 was for me, it was expanding my capacity for being uncomfortable. It was expanding my capacity to say, this isn't okay with me. I don't have all of the language. I don't quite understand all of the physiology that I'm working with. I don't know how to talk about this yet. I will come back to the conversation. This happened in multiple relationships and multiple ventures for me in 22, where it was like, I'm uncomfortable, but I am not willing to close this uncomfortable loop by going against myself. And I had to hold it. 22 was a hard year for me. 22 was a painful year. 22 was an expansion of my skill set, my tool set, and my mindset. And I would, I have zero regrets. I would not change it. There are when I, I write almost every single day and when I was reading, especially at the beginning of last year, when I was reading a lot of my pages, it was like, God, there was pain there. 
there was, I've always done it this way before. I've gone against myself. I haven't had the language. I haven't had the tools. I haven't had the confidence, which means the trust in myself. 22, a lot of things were galvanized for me. I do trust myself. I trust my boundaries. I trust my ability to tell the truth in the moment. I trust myself to shorten the amount of time that I'm uncomfortable. I would rather be uncomfortable for a solid minute and say like, I feel kind of weird about this, but I'm going to say no. Historically, I would say yes, but this isn't a match for me. I actually don't have the capacity to do this. I don't want to disappoint you ever. And I, I just, I don't have the availability to do this. Those are all things that I've said this year, by the way. I would rather be uncomfortable for a short amount of time and stay congruent with myself for the long game. You have to decide, are you going to continue to close micro loops and close micro loops and then run around the drama triangle? Or are you going to release the grip on that drama triangle and tell the truth in the moment? Here's one key ingredient that you're going to need. And I'm going to spoil the ending for you. You're going to need a massive amount of curiosity to do this work. One of the other reasons we people please is we want certainty. If I people please them, I know that they're, they're going to think a certain way about me and temporarily I'll be okay until they keep asking, right? If you can get curious, like, I wonder what's going to happen if I say no to them. Let's go find out. Will I be okay on the other side? I'm still alive, right? Like we're having this exchange. Sometimes stating the obvious is super weird. I'm alive. I have survived 100% of the boundaries that I have put in place. I have survived 100% of the difficult conversations that I've ever, ever had. And at the age of 43, at this season in my life, in my business, in my family, in my core Metro crew, in, in my team, this is the most congruent that I've ever been. I, this is the most I have ever loved myself. This is the most that I have ever felt like all cylinders are firing most of the time. Do I have setbacks? Of course, like I'm human and I trust myself. I don't need to overcomplicate my life by over committing so that other people think I'm a good person. I don't want to seem like I'm anything. I just want to be it. So I'm so curious what has landed for you. <laughs> they say it's the most wonderful time of the year. Historically speaking, that has not been the case for the high achievers that I've worked with. So that's one of the reasons we did the big, bold boundaries challenge over the, the last couple of weeks, because I want you set up. The other thing that we're going to be doing is inside of the inner circle in December, and I'm, I'm actually going to offer this as a, a for purchase workshop. We're going to be talking about wiser goals. I am so tired of the way that goal setting is taught. And because this is the most wonderful time of the year and we're headed into goal setting hell, I've decided to stack the deck in your favor. So inside of the inner circle in December, we're going to be, I'm going to be teaching you a different way of goal setting. Typically goals, you know, especially January goals, I think the statistic is they're usually done by like Feb the first week of February. And that's the long game. What would happen if you eased your way in to 23? What would happen if you had a system of goal setting that you could rinse and repeat monthly and they actually allowed you to be congruent with yourself? Most goal setting is created out of lack. What would happen if you actually were goal setting out of abundance? That's what we're doing inside the inner circle. That's what there's a, a class that I'm going to be teaching on Thursdays in December inside of our group. And I'm, I'm letting you in behind the scenes. So if you're interested in that, there's more information com coming. But if you want information today about it, just DM me wiser or email me Heidi at HeidiMetro.com with the subject line wiser and I'll, I'll give you the details. It is a, an absolutely life-changing mechanism. And if you've taken this training before, it is absolute, absolutely worth doing again. You've heard of SMART goals, but we're going to take it wiser. Okay. All right. I think we nailed it. I think we got it. So next week, my team and I are going to be taking a sabbatical week. We're going to be resting. This is the time of year and I'm recognizing it in my physiology where I do want to sprint to the end of the year. And I recognize that that sprint is based in lack and I don't set goals in lack and I don't people please my way through life anymore. So I am actively untying. I'm actively looking at historically what I used to do and doing that work. And it takes some energy 
to reroute. It takes calm. It takes a soothed nervous system to make aligned decisions. And that's what we're going to be doing on my team next week. We're going to be taking the, the week of Thanksgiving. We're going to be talking about what, what is actually Thanksgiving. We're going to be honoring the fact that it, it's not about gratitude. We're going to be honoring the true Thanksgiving story. We're going to be hanging out with our families and connecting. And then the week after, we'll resume our show. Okay? All right. Have a good week. Let me know what landed for you, and I'll talk with you soon. Okay? Be well.